About 50 people have died from an accidental overdose since the start of this year in San Francisco. And already last year, the drug epidemic has killed more people than COVID in the city. Well, one East Bay mom is worried that her son will be the next victim unless he gets the help that he so desperately needs. Fed up with the drug dealing and the supplying of people like her son with a lethal substance called fentanyl, she staged a protest in the streets of the Tenderloin District where she was joined by community activists, police, and local lawmakers. That mom, Jackie Berlin, joins me now for what is a tough conversation, but Jackie, it's one that you say needs to be had. Absolutely, Ella. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to get this message out. Um, my son is a fentanyl addict. Um, he's been a heroin addict for about nine years. In the last few months, he's, start, he's started using fentanyl. And his condition has deteriorated faster in a couple months on fentanyl than it ever did in nine years on heroin. And I'm very scared for him. Um, he's on the streets of San Francisco because that's where he gets what he feels he needs most easily. So Jackie, you've started this movement called Care for Corey. So tell me more about your son. Where exactly is he now? Is that part of your search? And how did he start using? Um, the movement is actually stopfentanyldeath.org. Um, and Corey is... I don't know where he's at right now. I mean, I know that he's in San Francisco. He calls, last time I talked to him was a couple of weeks ago. Um, he started, he got started um, on smoking marijuana back when he was 18 or 19. And then he slowly progressed. I think he was, he started using the drugs to help deal with anxiety um, issues. Um, and then he just started to progress to more and more um, harder drugs and he tried his girlfriend introduced him to heroin and and ever since then it's been a battle for his safety and his health and i've heard of that that uh, a partner can really introduce somebody to using drugs like this so people keep saying that an addict won't get the help that they need and clean up their act until they want to do it themselves but you say that that's the problem with the system as it is today that addicts like Corey can't be held responsible for themselves so what would you like to see change in how america deals with addiction yeah i think there there's definitely some issues Corey is absolutely not doesn't have any clarity when he's using and when it's so easy for him to get the drugs and to get um you know to get clean needles and all of that it's it's normalizing addiction and just allowing it and it's not giving him any incentive to want to get well and as i said without the clarity he's not getting well also prop prop 47 um stopped uh, a lot of the arrests. He used to get arrested for having drugs and paraphernalia. Um, and that's when he would get some clarity and, and get sober. And I would hope that I could, you know, get him into a program, but now he's not even there. He's not even getting arrested. So we're not getting those moments of um, sobriety and clarity where we can talk to him and try to convince him to get the help. help. Um, so what I want to see happen, um, in California is for it not to be so easy to get these drugs. The open air drug market is is just in San Francisco, people in and, and most of California, um, it's just allowed. There aren't arrests anymore um, for selling drugs. Um, it's very rare. And if they are arrested in San Francisco, uh, the DA doesn't prosecute. Um, Fentanyl just absolutely needs to be off the streets. It's incredibly harmful. It's a scourge. It's, as I said, said before, my son is deteriorated so rapidly. It's horrible what this drug is doing to him. There were board supervisors from San Francisco at your protest, including Safai and Haney. So what did they tell you can be done to get addicts into a mandatory board and care where they can live for enough time supervised to get sober that may be more appropriate than incarceration or being in our streets? They said that they're budgeting money for more beds um, and an abstinence only uh, housing 
and their um, budget proposals are coming up this coming week. So, I mean, that all sounds well and good, but without um, compulsion and professional medical attention, um, it's not going to work for my son. They said it's going to be run by, um, by former drug addicts. Fentanyl doesn't work like that. He's going to need, um, in order to get off of it, he's going to need professional help and some drugs to help him detox. He's not going to just walk in and say, okay, I want a bed. I want to get healthy. Um, he needs to be compelled to do that. And he needs to have professional care. And that's just not available. Through whatever, what, yeah. What resources have you found that you kind of tried to um, create a pathway for Corey, but again, might require for him to voluntarily choose to submit himself to this? And what would you like to see done in the sense of our laws? I mean, it sounds like conservatorship would need to be at work here, but that's reserved for the mentally ill. So what can happen here to get people who need the help, but they can't choose the help themselves to have this like compulsory outpatient system for them that you'd like to see? Yeah, I have looked into um, conservatorship and it, it looks like there's going to be so many roadblocks to me getting that because he can't make um, choices for himself right now um, that are in his best interest. And I think just as um, just as it's done when when someone tries to commit suicide, they're put on a 72 hour hold and they're evaluated um, by, um, you know, a psych team. I think that's what needs to be done with these people that are so ill on the streets. Um, if you go, you know, you go down to the Tenderloin and you see these people, they can barely stand up. They're sleeping on the streets. They're not caring for themselves. They they can't take care of themselves properly. Um, so I think laws need to be put into place where they're at least, you know, taken somewhere for, you know, a couple of days and they're shown options and they're, and they're giving medical care um, to, you know, to, to get at least some clarity and start to get a little bit well so they can make choices to, you know, go in, go into this. Um, short of changing the conservatorship laws where people like me, family members, you know, who love these addicted people, um, you know, could get conservatorship of them and then have them, you know, taken in to get help. When, I mean, I have a, a friend whose son was in, in Mexico down in um, Tijuana and he got lost down there and she was trying to find him. Well, it turns out, he was picked up off the streets and put into rehabilitation in Tijuana and they got him sober. They had him for two weeks. They found out who his family was and then they called them. Uh, I don't understand why we're not picking people who are laying on the streets up and putting them into a bed and, and helping them. And why they can do that in Mexico, but they, they can't do it here in the United States, in California. I don't understand. Wow. Well, the San Francisco chief medical examiner does report that an overwhelming majority of these accidental overdose deaths were between uh, white men who were between 35 and 64 years old in the Tenderloin. If we could take a look at the statistics, since January, 262 people were killed, 182 of them by fentanyl. And in 2020, 712 people died that's more than those killed by COVID in that year. Jackie, if you can explain one more time, your concern about fentanyl specifically and all these people who have had lives outside of their addiction who have now just succumbed to something that is so much bigger than themselves. Yeah, fentanyl has absolutely um, taken over anybody who accidentally first ingests it or chooses to ingest it. And it's incredibly dangerous. My son has um, overdosed and he's been um, revived with Narcan. I am thankful um, that there are, you know, some measures put into place um, in that respect. But um, he, I'm sorry. 
he I'm I'm he's he's had so many friends that have passed away this past year he says it's the worst year that he's ever been out on the streets and he said that he won't use by himself and he'll only use when someone is sitting by him that has Narcan because I asked him how he's keeping himself safe because he knows it's a very real possibility that he can overdose and die and um that's my biggest fear right now so I feel a great need to get get him off the streets and get him into treatment as soon as possible because any any hit could, his next hit could be the last time and as i said i haven't heard from him for a couple of weeks so i don't even when time goes by i haven't heard from him i'm not sure if he's alive or not and that's very difficult to take well jackie i just can't imagine and i'm so sorry for your heartache and for all those parents and the loved ones of these people who have fallen victim to addiction and I really hope that you do successfully intervene and that Corey gets the help that he so needs. Thank you Ella. I appreciate it. Take care.